What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, finishing off the month of August and heading into the month of September in 2019. We're also going to be taking a look at the stock market futures and boy are the stock market futures gapping down. We're going to be talking about my personal opinion on this and kind of my psychology and my my philosophy and strategy heading into this month of September because I do expect there to be a lot of volatility and a lot of buying opportunities and stocks heading into this upcoming month. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general and consider joining our Discord group chat and our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below and are 100% free of charge. So guys, the markets have gapped down very aggressively today, really in the past hour and 20 minutes since the uh, futures market opened, which was at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. And for those of you guys that don't know, every single Sunday, the futures market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. So you get kind of an idea of where the market could be trading heading into that upcoming week. You get to take a look at crude oil futures, natural gas futures, gold futures, and a bunch of other ones, silver futures as well. So you kind of get an understanding of what is going on, you know, in the market. And you guys can clearly see right now the ES. Uh, you know, slash ES here, E-mini S&P 500 index futures, they're down 36 points right now, down 1.26%. And if we go to the five-day, five-minute chart, you guys can see this gap down that we did experience here. So we see, uh, we can see here, we kind of closed the week right around this level right and then we gap down pretty aggressively if we go to the SPX right now the S&P 500 index you can see this past Friday we had an abysmal day in the markets we closed at about 2847 and we were holding that support that we talked about on Friday's video at around 2850 and now with the futures gapping down guys that is telling me while I'm doing my analysis here and a bunch of others right that are watching the charts that we are breaking below this critical support and we could be going down to as low as 2810 which is the next support that I am watching on the S&P 500 here so the Nasdaq right now is down a lot right now guys it's down a lot even more than the S&P it's down about 110 points here down 1.45 percent you guys can clearly see the gap down that we saw we did get as low I think as low uh, uh, um, down to about let's see 73 350 right you guys can see 7350 we kind of ran up a bit since then since the futures markets opened um this was actually about 30 40 minutes ago that we hit this low and we are starting to fill that gap from the dump so i'm interested in seeing what we're going to be doing in these markets tomorrow if we take a look at the nasdaq or rather the dow jones industrial average this one's down 300 points right now the future is is down 1.22 percent so now the markets guys the futures the you know you know the panic selling is continuing from this past Friday. And for those of you guys that weren't in tune with what happened in the markets this past Friday, t Trump was tweeting very scary and skeptical things out there that really turned the market into panic. We saw the Fed, you know, they had a meeting. We saw China retaliated. They slapped more tariffs on the United States on $75 billion worth of goods. Those tariffs are going to go into effect over this a span of a couple of months from September to December. We got a tweet from Trump. Trump saying that he wants all American businesses to, to take away their business from China. They want to really do business in other, in other places, which freaked out a bunch of people and just tanked the market, right? That's kind of a gist of what ended up happening this past week. The Fed really wasn't looking. Um, you know, Trump obviously wants the Fed to aggressively cut rates, and the demeanor that the Fed was showing, it just wasn't showing that aggressiveness, right? So that kind of sparked things off, in my opinion. The tweets came after that, and the market took a massive, massive drop, and it's honestly spilled into this week it seems like by what we're seeing here in the futures and like I mentioned in Friday's video I kind of expected that to happen right I think the blood is going to continue in the water for the rest of this week maybe not the entire week but at least 
Monday, Tuesday, we might see a bounce back. But overall, I think the trend is going to be down. I think the markets are just going to be negative, right? So let's just talk about, um, you know, kind of my strategy heading into this week. So we saw the futures. We see how we're trending down. And in my opinion, again, this could happen for the rest of the week. We might see a little bit of a bounce back, but overall, we may be trending down. And what does well when the markets are trending down? Let's go back to the ES very quickly. You know, what trends well or what does well? What do I personally trade? Well, you guys see these market ETFs here. We'll start off this video talking about a couple in specific that I'm watching. So TVIX for sure is number one. TVIX did very well this past Friday, and as you guys know who track this uh, particular ETN, it does very, very well when the markets are volatile, right? And when the markets are dropping, and especially when there's a lot of tension around trade war, tariffs, retaliations from China, you know, retaliations from the US, all this different stuff, especially on the same day, guys, which is what we got on Friday. When that stuff happens, you know, it's just crazy, right? And TVIX, the volatility kicks up. TVIX does very, very well. So again, the futures are down. Down. So that means this is most likely, if the futures are continuing to stay down heading into tomorrow, this is most likely going to gap up tomorrow and do extremely well. If the markets stay where they are, where they are right now, this can literally be gapping up by 5-10% uh, tomorrow morning, and that's if the markets stay where they are right now. And again, when the markets are very rocky, the VIX, which trades based upon, or which TVIX trades based upon, the VIX here, the volatility index, it goes up, right? When the markets are rocky, this goes up, and that drags up TVIX. So that's the main one that I'm watching heading into tomorrow, guys. Two other ones that I track that trade based upon the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are SQ. QQQ, which trades based upon the NASDAQ, and XPS, SPXS, which trades based upon the S&P 500, right? So SPXS here, this goes up whenever the S&P 500 is going down, right? So you could play this if you expect the markets, especially the S&P, to trend down for that day or maybe that week if you do want to swing trade it, right? And we're noticing now, if we do break down some technicals on this, let me let me show you guys. This this is forming a bit. This could be a bullish move here if we end up popping out of this, which at this point, again, if the futures hold, this is going to be breaking out. So this could be a very uh, a big momentum play, especially if the markets dump heavily tomorrow. So this could be a breakout play of about 5 6 7%, depending on how much the S&P goes down. And how this trades in particular is, let's say the S&P is down 2% one day. This is a 3x leverage DTF, as you guys can see here where my cursor is the 3x, meaning that the s and is down 2%, this is going to be up 6% because it's, it goes up three times what the S&P is going down, right, if that makes any sense. So this is one that I'm watching for sure, and SQQQ is literally the same thing as SPXS, but instead of tracking the S&P 500, this one's tracking the NASDAQ. So let's say the NASDAQ 100 tech stocks get hit like crazy, tech goes down big, Apple gets hit based on that tweet from... Uh, uh, Trump on Friday talking about business in China. They want he wants it to be removed. That's obviously going to affect Apple. And Apple has a big weight on the Nasdaq. So let's say the Nasdaq dumps, which again it very well could. It goes down two percent. SQQQ is going to be up 6%. So this could be a good way to play the short of the NASDAQ without actually shorting Apple or, you know, whatever other stocks are heavy in the NASDAQ because shorting stocks, in my opinion, is extremely risky and, and the loss is massive, right? The loss of trading SQQQ, if you're managing your risk, it could be 2%, 3% at most, and that's if you're managing your risk. But with, with short positions, it could be hundreds of percent loss, which is honestly why I don't really short stocks. To be completely honest with you guys, I do options sometimes, but even with options, I'm not day trading options or anything like that. I'm usually just using options to hedge against my long-term bets, and I buy 
in those long-term bets, I use options and the pro the profits I take from the options, I typically buy more shares when that stock that I had put options on is a bit lower, right? That's kind of what I do. And that's not even all the time either, to be completely honest with you all. It really just depends when I'm trading options and times like these, these are times when I'm considering, right, doing some put options on some stocks. And we'll talk about that in a couple of seconds here, or rather minutes. And SQQQ, if we break out like that, that's going to be very, very bullish as well. So those are three ETNs, ETFs that I'm watching, um, you know, heading into tomorrow. And to be completely honest with you guys, I see some more downside in two stocks in particular that are, that do rather have a lot of Chinese exposure. And one of those stocks, which I might consider doing a put on, is Apple stock, AAPL. We all know a lot of Apple's business is in China, right? And with the trade war ramping up, with Trump sending that tweet about American companies in China, this can see a lot of heat in this upcoming week, especially tomorrow, especially Tuesday, Wednesday as well. So Apple, guys, at this point, we are down here on the RSI, but then again, you know, technicals go out the window whenever there's a huge, you know, gold global event, a huge media event, you know, the, the technicals sometimes go out the window. So this doesn't really mean that, you know, Apple's going to jump, but I just figured it's worth looking at and seeing, okay, maybe since the RSI is down, we might see a bit of a pop, but then again, you know, the NASDAQ is gapping down heavily right now in terms of the futures, which in most, in most, uh, most likely is going to bring down Apple. So again, you got to kind of take the, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, what's it called? The, um, indicators with a grain of salt, especially in these time periods when the markets are crazy volatile. But anyway, Apple for sure has more downside. Maybe it pops up a little bit. You know, we might see a little bit of a rebound, but overall, I think it can do something like this where the overall trend is going to be down, right? So this could open up a big put option opportunity, um, you know, where I'm, I might, potentially buy more shares but at this point since apple is pretty high right i don't think i'm gonna buy more shares but i might just play a put to profit on the downside and then consider buying maybe right with the cash that i do make if i make cash on that play there so another one that has a decent amount of chinese exposure that did very poorly this past friday is 3m and this is another stock that i'm long on mostly a dividend play here i like their dividend i like how fast they're growing their dividend and and I like their payout ratio and the fact that they are a dividend king, meaning they've been increasing dividends for 50 plus years. They've with lasted through recessions with increasing dividends. And that as a kind of dividend investor, in a sense, I like that because I take my profits from trading options, whatever I'm doing, and then I funnel them into my long term portfolio, which consists of, you know, a lot of dividend companies, a lot of growth companies, a lot of tech companies. It's kind of just a big portfolio of a bunch of different, you know, valuable companies, value plays really that I think have strong economic moats and that I think will be here for a long time. And that's kind of my philosophy, 3M being one of them. And let's say the trade war worsens, which again, I think it's going to, like I mentioned in Friday's video, this one could do very poorly here. We can dump even further, maybe into the 140s, could open up a very good opportunity for a put there. Another one that I want to talk about today, and I'm, you probably saw it in the title. I don't know if I put it in the title, but if you saw it in the title, we're talking about it right now is gold guys slash GC gold is gapping up heavily right now. The last time I checked, it was up $20 right now. It's up $18 and 60 cents up 1.2%. And guys, we talk about gold a decent amount on this channel. When the markets are rocky, when people are losing faith in the economy, which is happening right now with the trade war. Let's be completely honest with uh, with yourselves, right? Everyone knows that at this point. You know, gold is viewed as a safe haven. It's not really an investment. You don't get cash flow from it. You just simply put your money in there if you think the dollar is going to go down, if you think stocks, equities are going to get crushed, real estate, you know, you just put your money in there and typically people view this as a safe haven where their money could even appreciate in times of, a, you know, economic slowdown and economic downturn. And you guys can clearly see now with everything pretty much red in terms of the futures, gold is up 1.2%. And let's talk about the 20 year one month chart at this point. And I want to talk to you guys about the next level that we may gap up 
to if gold continues this bull run here and that level is 16 or rather more like 1700 dollars right we talked about the gap up from 1430 up to 1550 i called that out a couple of months ago not really i it's not really like i called it out but i said to look out for it right because that was the next level and as the markets got a bit more uncertain the economy got more uncertain the trade war worsened you know this filled the gap up so now we broke the resistance of 1550 right now today with the gap up in these futures so now i want to see are we holding 1550 as a new support and are we going to potentially fill up to 1700 that's a pretty ballsy thing to say because that is nine ten percent move we might not even get there right we might not get there but that on a technical basis is what i'm looking to potentially see if we start to climb into the 1600s, I might be thinking, okay, we've ran above 1550, we're in 1600 now, maybe we could get to 1700, which is the next big price target on um, gold based on this long-term 20-year one month chart but then again guys like i just said that is a bit of a kind of a ballsy thing to say gold's going to 1700 that's a big move we have to take it step by step and see if it does end up getting there but that's just honestly a long-term target that i am watching right now with gold and you can see we actually gapped up to uh, 1565 which was at that point that peak that would have put the future up about $28, which would maybe be up like 1.6, 1.7%. So with gold running up here, guys, I'm watching GDX. GDX. This is a Vanek Vectors ETF Trust Gold Miners ETF. And what trades on GDX? JNUG. JNUG, J-N-U-G. This goes up whenever G or GDX is going up at a 3x rate. This is another 3x leverage ETF. And take a look, guys. On Friday, it was up 15%. GDX was up roughly 4%. It's not the exact in terms of the 3x, but it's roughly in the ballpark, kind of, right? You can see 4% times Times three that's 12 percent not quite 15 percent but again it's roughly in the ballpark there so gdx i'm watching that jnug jdst um that inverse combo it's very very attractive especially when gold's pumping up selling off extremely volatile um like it could be in these next couple of days so if we go to my inverse etf watch list very quickly guys you can see some other ones here um, we got uh, natural gas is not really doing anything right now. Actually, it's up two cents, but still we're trending under the major moving averages right now on the four hour chart. So I want to see a clear rejection to get into D gas or a clear breakout here to get into U gas. We're kind of fiddling under that 180 SMA, which is this gold line. So I do want to see what it ends up doing when it hits that level again. I expect a retest maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. We see crude oil has been getting crushed over the past couple of weeks guys months at this point honestly and we got another big dump of about nearly two percent a dollar shaved off of crude oil right here so dwt could be a play especially if crude oil does something like this where it ends up dumping down and pushing to a lower low maybe back down to the high 40s and dwt guys for those of you that have no idea what i'm talking about dwt is another ETM that trades based upon crude oil. It goes up whenever crude oil is going down at a 3x rate. So guys, honestly, I'm not looking at stocks this week. This week is going to be very rocky. Maybe a bounce back in Apple. Maybe a bounce back, um, you know, in one of these like Microsoft because this one was down heavily. Maybe if it holds 133, which is a critical support. But at this point, with, with the markets rocky, with Trump going on Twitter, just causing havoc, right, with all this trade war tension, I just see stocks you know, having a lot more downside. And I don't want to get caught in one of these positions where I buy into a stock thinking the markets are going to bounce back and then boom, we just dump even further. So that is kind of why I'm mostly watching and I'm being completely honest with you guys here, right? I could be saying the markets are bouncing back. I'm buying into Apple. I'm buying into Facebook, Google, whatever it may be, AMD, Square. I could be saying that, but the truth is 
I'm really not looking to do that quite yet, right? I'm looking to see when the markets stabilize, if they do, and then I'm going to hop into potentially one of those positions, and of course, I will let you know. But overall, with the markets being rocky, this is a perfect time to start buying to potentially, for you, not saying you should do that. I'm not a financial advisor. This is strictly for documentation purposes, for my journey, and entertainment purposes for you. But if you see value in companies right now, that are falling. Maybe it's like some of these dividend players like, you know, J&J, maybe even Microsoft that's taking a nice $10 shave um, in terms of its price from its all-time high. You know, this could be a time where it's perfect to start a long position if you have that long-term outlook. Don't be scared just because the markets are dropping. Don't be scared and discouraged from starting long positions, guys. I've been buying, I'm being honest here, I've been buying Johnson & Johnson. I bought five shares on Friday, like I mentioned, and I potentially want to buy some other stocks long term here as the markets, if the markets continue to drop. And then once you get more into long term investing, you realize that oh my goodness, I love it when the markets drop. I want the markets to drop so I can buy even more, so my wealth can be compounded even greater in the long run. Because no one gets rich, guys, from buying stocks at the peak. That's just not how it goes, right? You don't get rich from buying stocks at the peak. You get rich from buying on the dips. Let's just take a look at Microsoft stock very quickly before I end this video. Take a look at this three-year chart. You think you got rich buying Microsoft up here at 140? Well, that's not a good example. Let's say at 115, no, right? You got rich from buying Microsoft on all of these mini dips down here on the way up to those highs, right? The whole idea is long term, whenever stocks take big dips, buy long or buy into them if you see potential in that company long term. Like look at the people, you know, $35 if you, if you were to buy in, that's not the best buy in point at that point in time, but $14 when you saw it low, a lot of people were panicking at this point, but that was the best time to get in. And you guys can clearly see what Microsoft did there up hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of percent from that point in time. So I just want to leave you all <coughs> excuse me, with that little point to end off this video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. If you want to see further content from me, consider subscribing and also drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the markets. What do you guys think about stocks in particular, ETFs? What are you looking to trade this upcoming week? Options, I would love to know. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch it. It means a lot to me, guys. Peace out. Have a great day. Good luck this week. I hope Trump doesn't screw it up, but it might happen. Peace out, guys.